More blood spilled on the streets of the capital. The national security minister concerned about a new crime trend and the Commonwealth mourns the death of Prince Philip. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Friday, April 9th. Police in New Providence are currently investigating a homicide that occurred on Kemp Road that has left one man dead. Assistant Superintendent Audley Peters was on the scene to give the details. The driver of a Nissan Cube was traveling north along Camp Road when the driver of a, another vehicle stopped in front of his vehicle. A lone passenger exited that vehicle armed with a firearm and discharged it at the driver of the Cube. The driver of the Cube attempted to exit the vehicle. However, uh, several other shots were fired at him and he dropped because of the persons that were coming on the scene that suspect made good his escape. Emergency medical services were summoned. Following the examination of the body, it was pronounced lifeless. According to ASB Peters, no drugs or weapons were found on the victim's car. The victim appeared to be in his early 30s and the matter does not appear to be gang or drug related. Police are currently following a significant lead and hope to bring this matter to a close as soon as possible. Reporters spoke to members of the community where the incident happened and they expressed their concerns about the safety of that area. It was, I mean, Early in the afternoon and just ahead, the sounds of what we thought to be a tire blowing or something and come to find out that it was actually gunshots and the young man obviously lost his life and it's, I mean, children frequent the area and sit outside and play and to just fathom that one of them could have been there and accidentally got shot. It, it, it's just mind boggling. Another female resident tearfully expressed how the incident will now affect her daily life. Coming from out of the area, into the area, making Camp Road, a bad, giving Camp Road a bad name, making it look as if it's people in the area doing it. But it's sad to know that somebody lost their life and it's somebody's mother, um, mother to find out that it's just gotten killed. It's really sad. These boys need to stop. Police are encouraging any members of the public with any information to contact the police at 502-9991 or 2. National Security Minister Marvin Dames telling the media today that it's very concerning about the latest trend among teens. Since last month, there have been two separate reports of school-aged children digesting marijuana edibles. It's, um, it's a concern. I mean, this is... Uh these are one of the growing trends that we, contend, uh, we continue to see, not, not only here in the Bahamas, uh, but elsewhere. And so uh, we continue to monitor concerns like this. Um, and uh, as you know, the police are, are currently on it. And so we'll see, we'll see where that, that leads us. Now on Thursday, police reported an alleged shipment of marijuana-laced cookies that made its way to the island of Eleuthera, shipped from New Providence via mailboat to the settlement of Rock Sound, where several students received and ate these laced cookies. As a result, they all became sick, and meanwhile, a few weeks earlier, a 15-year-old student was taken into custody after he allegedly took to school and sold marijuana-infused Rice Krispie treats to students at the S.C. McPherson Junior High School. At least seven students became sick and had to be taken to hospital. A group of jet ski operators quietly assembled at the western end of Goodman's Bay this morning, pleading with the competent authority to allow them to return to work after more than a year. Argerino Saunders has more on this story. Not wanting to rock the boat with a protest or cause a black eye for the rebounding tourism industry, jet ski, parasailing and small boat operators called on the competent authority to allow them to return to work after more than a year of just getting by on benefits from the National Insurance Board. From Goodman's Bay on Friday, veteran operator Renrit Roll of Action Water Sports said, while they appreciate the assistance from NIB, what they really want is to get back to work. You know, we appealing to the government to let us go back. Like he said before, the government has given us that national insurance we want to say. On behalf of the water sports operators, thank you very much for the assistance that you have given to us. But it takes more than us for us to survive. I mean, we don't want to sound ungrateful, but I mean, you know, if you allow us to go back to work, 
then those assistance that you're providing for the hundreds of jet ski operators that are now operating. The group is sending a letter to the competent authority asking permission to operate. They are convinced that they can maintain the necessary COVID safety precautions, even more so than food stores and other businesses already allowed to operate. According to Roll, the jet ski operators say they are a vital part of any success a resurging tourism market will have. We got spring breakers started here and they want to participate in water sports because that's one of the main things that tourists come to the Bahamas for is water sports. I mean, the hotel has their activities, but I mean, after the activities are gone, then water sports is, is, is really something that they want to do. You know, so I mean, there's a big demand for water sports in the tourism industry and that's why we are here today. To demand, not to demand, but to ask the government to let us go back to work so we can supply the need of the tourists. The operators say they have not been able to meet with the Minister of Tourism to voice their concerns. In the meantime, they have noticed that there are indeed some water sports operations taking place on Cable Beach. Royal responded to allegations that hoteliers may try to squeeze local operators out of the market. He is confident it will not happen. Yeah, we heard rumors around that, you know, the hotels want to get into the operation of um, jet skis and water sports. But I think um, the government has put in place whereby this is reserved strictly for behemoths and tripping yours. Like myself, I've been in business now for over 30 years. I've seen the ins and outs. I mean, you know, there used to be a, a stigma towards jet ski operation. But now, um, since we put the rotation in place about 10 years ago, something similar to taxi drivers where everybody get a chance to go around. So that right there was able to curtail all those um, problems that we are having. The group of water sports operators represented jet ski, parasailing and small boat operators on Paradise Island and Goodman's Bay. They are hoping for a favorable response from the competent authority. Jerino Saunders for JCN News. Hospitality workers join the list of priority groups to get their first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. This says both Atlantis and Bahama are open as vaccination centers today. JCN News visited the Atlantis Center this morning and Human Resources Executive Denise Barnes shares why she decided to vaccinate amid loads of skepticism. Everyone was talking about what are we going to do, it's a pandemic, whatever it is. Now we have a vaccine. I see this as an opportunity to take a stance to be proactive about me. And so once I recognized that the government of the Bahamas had an opportunity for the vaccine, the company decided to make it very convenient for me to do it. There's no reason why I shouldn't. The country's tourism product has been placed on hold over the last year due to the pandemic. Tourism officials have stressed that the vaccine will be a key factor in jumpstarting the sector. Here's VP of Supply Chain Management, Ivan James Jr., who shares his thoughts. I hope so. I'm, I'm going to look at the glass as being full um, and hope that everybody takes this opportunity as it's presented itself. According to the consultative committee, hospitality workers include hotel and resort employees, along with public transportation workers and much more. Atlantis Paradise Island's Prince of Wales and Crown Ballrooms transformed to a vaccination center this morning. Scores of hospitality workers, including employees of Atlantis, queued as they waited to receive their first jab of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. Chief Hospital Administrator Mary Walker, who was present for the inaugural vaccinations at Atlantis and representing the National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee, says that the site, like all other vaccinations, sites is able to inoculate up to 500 persons, adding that today alone over 300 persons were booked for that site. We've been having a very good response um, thus far from all of the sites that we're doing it. And as we roll out more sites, you'll realize that we'll move from area to area. And a part, a part of that is because, again, as I keep saying, these are the same professionals moving from place to place to place to make sure that we can get this all done in the shortest time frame as possible. It is the intention of the committee to vaccinate as many persons as we possibly can. I know persons, we are always talking about this herd immunity. The vaccinations will ensure that even if you are exposed later on and, and do contract COVID, your um, disease will not be as severe 
And so you'll be more likely to survive and not have the long lasting effects of COVID that we're now seeing worldwide. And so it's incumbent that we ask persons. We're trying to be safe for one another and for our loved ones and the persons who we interact with every day. So vaccine is the way to go right now. Vaccinations at Atlantis will continue through Wednesday, April 14th. To date, more than 10,000 vaccinations have been administered on New Providence, Grand Bahama and Eleuthera. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.